Hey guys, welcome to our screencast on ocean resources and fisheries. Uh, we're going to start our examination of chapters 11 and 8, um, exploring aquatic biodiversity as well as how we can protect aquatic biodiversity. Um, it's going to be big and it's going to be important to note that uh, when we talk about HIPPO, right, the acronym used to identify the reasons for uh, a reduction in global biodiversity. Um, we know that H is, of course, the biggest um, with habitat destruction. I, invasives. P, population. P, pollution. And then there's the O factor. Um, when we talk about ocean resources and fisheries, the reason for our decline primarily can be attributed to overfishing. All right, so it's going to be the O factor, which is critical here. Uh, a couple quick definitions. Um, when we talk about fisheries themselves, we often refer to it as a sort of a, a concentration of a particular aquatic species that is large enough and suitable to a commercial harvesting industry. So really, what, what it is to us, it's an industry devoted to the catching, processing, or selling of fish, shellfish, or other aquatic animals. Uh, it's a huge industry, can't deny it, and to be fair, it, does, it sustains one billion people. Uh, it employs one million people, and in fact, it's sort of near and dear to my heart. Um, my brother is one of those crazy guys who works in the Alaskan fishing, fishing industry. Um, he hangs out with some of those guys and deadliest catch and all that stuff. Um, and, and the actual uh, amount of fish pulled out of the ocean every year is, is staggering, 125 million tons every year. Um, but something that can't be ignored and, and something that should be monitored and, and certainly um, perhaps regulated as we are currently extracting and harvesting fish 57% greater than the sustained yield for a variety of species. Uh, it's, it's never really going to be a case of uh, the industry itself overfishing and overconsuming and overharvesting uh, to the point where a fish species goes biologically extinct. Uh, rather, the major concern by the industry and environmentalists is, is the loss of uh, species to the point where they reach what we call commercial extinction. So it's, it's sort of crossing a, a threshold where the species gets so low in numbers that it's no longer economically viable to continue to extract them. Uh, and the reason why commercial extinction is becoming more and more widespread is because, well, human ingenuity has increased and, and technological advancements have developed to the point where it's almost impossible for many of these fish to actually hide anymore. And, and not only to hide, but uh, we can extract and harvest them and process them so incredibly efficiently now um, that it, it becomes quite easy. It's like shooting ducks in a barrel. So these are a variety of techniques indicated by this uh, slide, you can see spotter planes move in, they use sonar to track the fish, and then a variety of fishing techniques to harvest them. So I want to go over some of these harvesting techniques. Uh, the first technique we're going to look at is what we call bottom trawling. Uh, and, and for the purpose of, of your note sheet, guys, notice uh, the font in black will be um, the description of the practice, and then the font in red will uh, refer to the contribu contribution to depletion. So bottom trawling um, of all these fishing techniques might be the most devastating in terms of environmental impact. It involves dragging a massive net, uh, a net that is capable of encapsulating up to 12 jumbo jets I read somewhere. Um, absolutely incredible. Uh, and these nets then are weighed down by uh, a series of heavy chains and drag lines and um, massive metal plates as well. So it goes down to the bottom uh, of the ocean into what we call benthic habitats. And then that net is dragged by the uh, fishing vessel um, over the ocean floor. And so 
one of the major problems associated with this is an amazing disruption of ocean floor habitat and the displacement of a variety of aquatic species. Uh, and the, the target species really are what we call benthic organisms, those that live on the bottom of the ocean. Um, shellfish such as scallops, shrimp, and then bottom dwelling fish like cod, halibut, and, and flounder. Um, and, and ultimately the result of this though is, is pretty remarkable in terms of, of habitat destruction. Uh, this, I realize, is not a great image, um, but this is a, a picture of uh, the ocean floor following trawling. And, and it's sort of analogous to clear-cutting uh, a terrestrial forest where it can rip up the bottom habitat. And what's amazing is a lot of this can be seen from, from space, from pictures from space and satellite imagery. You can see the, the, the trawl lines here. So not only is it disrupting habitat, but it's also going to disrupt the bottom sediment and certainly increase the turbidity of the waters and certainly may negatively affect uh, aquatic life elsewhere. So these are trawl lines um, as viewed from space in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, of course, another major problem associated with uh, trawling is bycatch. And this image is never fun to, to look at. But of course, there's always unintended target organisms, those that they're not um, trying to catch but end up ensnared in the nets. And seals are often um, times caught by this trawling practice unintentionally. And unfortunately, by the time they're pulled to the surface, they're often lifeless and discarded. Uh, another technique that's commonly used to catch surface-dwelling fish uh, employs a large purse net, and it works just like a, a pocketbook that is cinched together by um, purse strings um, where they cinch it together, and they can catch enormous quantities of pelagic fish or uh, surface-dwelling fish. Um, oftentimes, surface-dwelling fish include uh, tunas, yellowfin tunas, mackerels, anchovies, and herring. Uh, and the idea is they typically use a spotter plane. They'll make note of where a large school of fish is, then the fl fishing fleet moves into the area, encapsulates the, uh, the school of fish with a large net, and then eventually they'll cinch it together. And you can see it's capable of, of extracting enormous quantities of fish pretty incredible stuff. So these are, are uh, mackerels being caught off the coast of South America, which we know is some pretty stellar fishing grounds. Uh, and of course, associated oftentimes, excuse me, I'll go back, but uh, you get s uh, significant bycatch associated with purse net fishing, um, usually with yellowfin tuna. Um, in these schools, you'll, you'll find, because there's lots of nutrients in the water and, and there's predation, associated with uh, bottlenose dolphins and Pacific white-sided dolphins, which are often caught as bycatch as well. Drift net fishing, uh, another very effective technique uh, of fishing where they um, lay out 40 miles uh, of nets that um, are set out. 40 miles is, is pretty amazing stuff, and not only is it extensive in terms of point A to point B, but there's also depth to the nets, uh, about 50 feet, and those nets can be um, lowered depending on the target fish they're looking for, uh, or if they're looking for surface fish. Uh, bycatch is associated with this, and the technique is, is that it's harvesting, or selectively harvesting, ideally, fish of a certain age or size. So oftentimes this can remove lar large cohorts of a population. Um, usually it works by a fish swimming into the net uh, and oftentimes the fish is small enough to fit inside the hole of the net um, but then all of a sudden gets caught as its larger um, portion of the body moves through and then it tries to reverse out of it and in doing so it gets its gills ensnared in the net so they often call it uh, gill net fishing. Uh, often bycatch is again associated with it, large predatory fish which are critical to the ecosystems of, of oceans such as shark are removed from the ocean. 
Finally, long lining is another technique that you may have seen this if you've seen the movie A Perfect Storm, where extremely long lines, uh, up to 50, or no, excuse me, 80 miles in length, absolutely incredible, are left and extended and allowed to drift in the ocean. And then along these lines, they are sequenced with a series of baited hooks. Uh, again, non-target species are often caught and even when they're not intending to fish, if a line gets caught or left to drift on its own, it can still continue to fish and continue to deplete aquatic life. So usually the intended target are pelagic fish, larger necton fish, strong swimmers like uh, swordfish as what they were trying to catch in a perfect storm. But unfortunately bycatch is associated and not only is it aquatic life, but it can come from above. And you can see here uh, an albatross has dove in to catch a fish and um, unfortunately was captured by the long line. And even perhaps more heart wrenching, of course, is to see endangered sea turtles ensnared by a long line as well. Uh, while these are 40 miles long, the United Nations has attempted to ban. Uh, long lines greater than 1.6 miles in length, yet compliance is completely voluntary. So